Tonight, I'm undercover in one of our crisis hit prisons. I see some prisoners out of it on drugs. What are you, hot, honey? Spies. Prison officers say they've lost control. I don't feel safe, Emma. It's shit. But inmates run the jail. The threat of violence is constant. You're not going to need that. Move away from me unless you want to use it on you. Security compromised. On the front of the fence, people are very partly just come back through. And prison officers struck down, exposed to drug fumes. Uh, big long full of space. And it's just rock. I ask, what will it take to turn our prisons around? Her Majesty's Prison, Northumberland, is one of the biggest in the country. I've just started working here as a prison custody officer. PCO Fenton, HMP Northumberland. Those of Marcus and undercover reporter to the BBC. Hello, I knew this is November 2. Press permission to move from Housebot 9 to Housebot 8, over. It's my first week, and already I'm responsible for escorting 70 prisoners. I just follow the crowd of prisoners and unlock the gates for them. There are more than 1,300 men behind bars here. Anything from driving offences to violent crime and drug smuggling. The demands are endless. My standard shift is 10 hours. Straight out of training, I do nine days in a row. Can of bacon grill. Those are noodles. Thank you. Speak to the guys on your way. I'm supposed to be over there feeding. It appears chaotic to me. These two prisoners are drunk at mealtime and aren't trying to hide it. Some are high on drugs. Hey, you got some string on your mouth there. Big bit of dribble coming down. Others are struggling to cope. You step out for like, one small request. And everyone wants you, they're just... Yeah. It doesn't stop from the moment you get there to the moment you leave. You can't work five days or six days solid there. It, it ruins you, you don't, you're not a person anymore, you just exist. Three years ago, the prison was privatized. French company Sodexo won the 15 year contract, promising the government it could save 130 million pounds. When the initial shock of the privatisation came out, the staff were shocked that it happened. But then we thought, well, maybe it could be a good thing. We might see a bit change. You, you, you train as part of a team, so you and the dog are a team. Jim Reed was a dog handler and prison officer with more than 20 years experience. His optimism didn't last long. They got rid of 96 uniformed staff, over 200 in total. I myself was part of a dog team, um, and we were told, you're gone. Since 2011, around half a billion pounds has been taken from the prison budget in England and Wales. As the prisoner population was rising, more than 6,000 officers were lost. 
Jim Reed took redundancy, but colleagues who stayed at Northumberland say they're overwhelmed. I've seen experienced staff crying in the main street. And I said, I, I can't take it, I can't take it anymore. And it's horrendous up there for staff. When they open doors, they're pulling knives on them, fights and the drugs. It's a lot to deal with, even for experienced staff. Last year, Sodexo took on 23 new officers. I'm one of them. During our nine-week training course, we were told that we'd been taken on to help turn the prison around. It's a big ask. I've got a wall of smoke you here. Yeah. A wall of smoke on this landing. Yeah. Not all of the smoke is from cigarettes. What do you take? Come on. In the evenings, prisoners usually get a couple of hours to socialise before they're locked in their cells. Sodexo says we should always be on the lookout for drugs, weapons and mobile phones. But it's not that easy. Even with the new staff like me, I'm the only officer on this landing right now. And there's nearly 30 of them. Just wondering what the party was. What the party was? Yeah. None of your business, is it? None of my business. No. Yeah. Yeah. All good in here? I mean, we did what? Do what? We're supposed to be in charge. I can't safely challenge them when I'm by myself. And the prisoners know that. Half past four to half past six, they can do what? Pretty much, yeah. That's the grim reality. The prisoner lying on the floor has smoked a drug called Spice. His forearms moving around uncontrollably, his eyes completely vacant doesn't know what he's seeing and face completely expressionless. Spice is now one of the most popular drugs in prison. It's a cheap chemical alternative to cannabis, only many times stronger. Spice is a potent, terrible drug. Hallucinating, become violent. They're walking around zombified, uh, off the face completely off the face. The effects of the drugs start to wear off. How's it going? You all right? Sure. I'm starting to worry there. The prison nurse arrives and an ambulance is on its way. Hello. Hello. What's going on here? What's the crack here? He was on the floor outside. Yeah. Just on his back. Sorry. Yeah. What are you having? Officers tell me they don't always call the nurse when prisoners react badly to spice. It happens too frequently. It's not just here. Prisoners regularly film themselves on mobile phones smoking spice. Spice in a giant ass. 58 prison deaths in England and Wales have been linked to the drug. He's gone, he's gone. HMP Northumberland is a training prison. It holds medium to low security prisoners in its 15 house blocks. They're supposed to study or work, preparing for life on the outside. What's the light working here? All right. 30 pounds a week, so it's all right. Nearly a quarter of new prisoners in England can't read or write to the level expected of an 11-year-old. The education and training they receive here is provided by outside contractors. Teachers try their best, but some of what I see is not impressive. This is an employability skills class. I see three prisoners colouring in a picture of the children's cartoon character, Peppa Pig. Prisoners 
colouring in Peppa Pig or anything similar is inexcusable. Sir Martin, who used to run the prison service, hasn't seen any of my secret footage. He's now advising the government. The art of reducing reoffending is not complicated. If you get somebody employable and get them into a job, the probability of them not going back to serious crime is hugely increased. These classes are provided by a company called Novus. They told us they've investigated my concerns and sent a report to the government. Prisons are supposed to be among the most secure institutions in the country. But small amounts of drugs have always come in during prison visits. This prisoner has tried to swallow packages of heroin passed to him by a visitor. I find this package of drugs hidden in the sock of another and hand it in. Sign there, then I'll do all the rest. Hey. But there's far more spice in the prison than can ever get in during visits. It's just like the amount of drugs that I've just found. There's no way that's come through here. On the very same day I started work at HMP Northumberland, staff made a massive find. Just on one house block, it found two and a half kilos of spice. It was laid out over a table. It would have filled up two backpacks worth. It's incredible. It has a prison value of a quarter of a million pounds, much more than it would be worth on the outside. Some of the spice was barely hidden in a prisoner's wardrobe. There could have been more. Officers don't know how much had already been sold. How they've been allowed to have that quantity of drugs in a cell is unbelievable. It's a major breach of security. All the officers I've spoken to think every inch of the block should have been searched. They say in the past it would have been. So they just locked the door window and just went in there and massively searched everywhere. And, you know what I mean? Took control. Now we're just. Officers tell me they think there was no lockdown because it would have cost Sodexo money. They say if they're deployed to a search, they can't also get prisoners to education, work and training. And Sodexo gets paid partly based on how many inmates attend. Who's ever seen it? it hasn't even scratched the surface. Really? So for what was 250 grand's worth and then the year before they got loads of steroids and so it hasn't touched the surface. I need a nice big Wesley. <laughs> when was the last time you were high? You seem... Yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. Last night at Bano. Yeah. This prisoner burgled to fund his cocaine habit. On the inside, he's still on drugs. Now it's spice. How will happen? Prison isn't helping him change his ways. HMP Northumberland's perimeter fence. Jim Reed used to regularly patrol inside the fence with a dog, intercepting drugs which had been thrown over. Sodexo scrapped all that and told him to drive around outside the perimeter on his own. And it was supposed to deter people from throwing items over the fence. It was a joke. Every member of staff knew security was a joke. We have to. On patrol one afternoon, Jim ran into trouble. So I was driving up the, coming up the road here. We had intelligence there was uh, uh, going to be a package dropped off. One or two bodies, whatever, were hiding behind this hedge. And as I came up this way, they threw a boulder or a brick or whatever they threw. They just went bang, it was a huge bang. And it, uh, it shot at the windscreen. And uh, I veered off to the right, 
and end up in this ditch over here. Jim escaped serious injury. Other staff doing the same job have been threatened or attacked too. Sodexo told us they work closely with the police to deliver significant successes in the constant battle to disrupt drug supply and illegal activity. There used to be regular, dedicated search teams across HMP Northumberland. Officers have told us now there are none. This officer is supposed to be thoroughly checking the locks, bolts and bars in these cells. He does three cells in just 20 seconds. This prisoner is in for burglary. We're calling him John. He seems disorientated and scared. I can't open your door, not when you're off the base. He's been kept in his cell until the spice wears off. We'll come and talk to you in a bit, okay? Once you've sobered up. We'll keep checking on you, okay? As he starts to come round, I can make out what he's been trying to tell me. What's wrong? You want off the wing? Later, I find out why. He says he's being bullied. I've been school three times on You find him every now and then, spice out his face crawling around the landings. When I see him again, he's totally out of it on spice. Other inmates think it's hilarious. I think they're spiking him, giving him cigarettes laced with spice. Stay down here. Don't lean in. Don't. Uh, no. Straight away, throws up on his bed, over his pillow, and rolls straight over on his face into it. He's got no idea that there's sick everywhere. He's got no idea he's got his face in it. He's got no idea he's in a prison. He's just not functioning at all. He's just here for your entertainment, isn't he? I told a more experienced officer that he's being bullied. It seems to me John's vulnerable and being failed by the prison system. Right across the prison service, the plain truth is that there are too few prison officers. And the great danger is some officers have retreated from interaction with prisoners to the ends of wings where they are perhaps observing prisoners. That's very, very dangerous. You have to have good order. You have to have a place which is safe and secure. There aren't enough officers to deal with the violence here either. A fight's broken out. By the time officers get there, it's all over. So they check the CCTV. I see one prisoner stomping on another. He's bringing. Me? What about you? I don't saw it, just stupid. I saw it. I see the result of an attack on another prisoner. Yeah. You got blood all over your nice carpet. And there are weapons in this prison. This knife was photographed inside, I'm told, in the last few weeks. 
Last year, 305 ambulances were called to the prison in just seven months. That's nine a week. The ones that are off their face are angry because they say the state of the jail, they don't feel safe. You know what I mean? They're getting taxed, they're getting robbed, they're scared again in the shower. And they kind of hold us responsible because at the end of the day, it's our jail. And it's not a safe environment for officers either. 35 were attacked at HMP Northumberland in 2015. I'm told about a recent assault. Got grazes and a couple of blows on his head. It's every f***ing week now, man. You will be assaulted, some way, form or another. It's, it's getting that way. You will be assaulted in your career, and no matter what you do. So obviously, if you look at the TV, yeah, that TV will get smashed straight away. After this prisoner was told his TV would be confiscated for beating up another inmate, he refuses to go back in his cell. Then he threatens me. I'm not going to your pad. Why not? Simple as that. Move away from me. You're not going to your pad? Move away from me, unless you want to use it on me. I prefer you didn't. Well, can you move away from me? I can step over here. Other officers tell me they don't confront prisoners because they're not confident backup will arrive to protect them if they're attacked. There's a lot of times when there's stuff happens and I can't react to it the way that I want to because there's not the backup there to deal with it. I can't push them back into myself because if I start fighting with it, there's no staff in the landing. I don't feel safe ever. It's shit. There were 6,430 assaults on prison staff in England and Wales last year. That's 17 a day, the highest ever recorded. Prison officers staged a series of walkouts. They said they didn't feel safe and had lost confidence. At HMP Northumberland, officers feel their authority has gone too. So there's no discipline at all. I, I feel like we've lost control of the jail, to be honest. Yes, to go behind the doors, but they run the jails. To do because they get whatever they want whenever they want. Yes! Just over a year ago, prisoners at HMP Northumberland filmed themselves having a party and apparently taking drugs. The party happened here on House Block Six. While I was there, staff made an astonishing find. Phones, tools, tablets. Oh, all black clothing, are yeah. Officers think prisoners were wearing the black clothing to sneak out at night and avoid being seen by CCTV cameras. We also found balaclavas and uh, black gloves. Blinky. Tin snips. Uh, tin snips and all sorts. Tin snips, wire cutting tools. Staff soon find out what they've been used for. Found a hole in the fence, they could get through, yeah. and they could sneak underneath and get towards the external area, pick up any packages and come back through. The hole in an internal security fence meant prisoners could collect drug deliveries thrown over the outer perimeter. That's a major breach of security. Uh, any tampering with the, uh, any fencing should have been picked up earlier. It should have been inspected. But how were they able to sneak out of their block in the first place? House Block 6 is supposed to be for well-behaved inmates about to transfer to open prisons. They aren't locked in their cells at night. Doors to the outside are supposed to be alarmed. I'm sent to check them after the discovery of the wire cutting tools and make my own astonishing find. An alarm should go off. It doesn't. We're doing the, uh, the door test, and then, wait, two of them work, two of them haven't. Um, if they know it doesn't work, then they know that we know it doesn't work now. So at least it's better that they know that we know I was told problems with the alarms were reported three weeks earlier. I suppose they're, they're constantly testing the system, constantly, and as soon as they find a weakness. Yeah, the weakness is, it's no screw. I get a chance to speak to the governor, Tony Simpson. Even he admits he's let the wrong sort of prisoners onto the block. Hello. Yeah. So we're doing a 
piece of work which is about how do you make it that actually it's guys that we actually want to be in there that are rather than the guys who are okay, right, trying to keep quiet or are actually up to the point. Taking advantage of what the actual house block is. Yeah, so that's kind of floating around in the background. We're not being too up on the yeah. um, at this stage. The governor also told me House Block 6, a prefab building, is 10 years past its sell-by date. We estimate that if Sodexo closed it with a loss of 40 beds, they would lose £16,000 per week. Sodexo say they've invested at least £3 million in safety and security, which are their top priority, and recruited an additional 37 staff. They say, after viewing the programme, we will of course investigate where necessary and take appropriate action. The government say they're determined to make our prisons places of safety and reform, and have promised to spend an extra £100 million a year on 2,500 new officers in England and Wales. The staff were already there, whose confidence has been eroded, we need to concentrate on recovering their confidence. I think some of that will come as they see additional colleagues arriving to work alongside them. Not being glib, it will take some time. Back at HMP Northumberland, despite my new intake, it still feels chaotic. I'm becoming used to the stress and the threat of violence, but I'm not prepared for what I see next. Ambulance, who for? Yeah? Yeah, I think he's probably in the space or something like... Shit. He's convulsing on the floor. It's an officer he's talking about. There have been reports officers' health has been put at risk by spice smoke in prison. Until now, there's been little evidence. He's uh, not good. Oh, he's just not good. He's had a big bowl of spice. It's not the first time officers here have been felled by inhaling spice smoke. I've been told at least three members of staff have also needed hospital treatment in the last seven months. And if you hear anyone there saying to the staff in the office, can you put the blowers on because it's very smoky up here? How long has he been here for? He's taken to hospital and later recovers. I spent two months undercover at HMP Northumberland. I saw prison officers unable to maintain control, much less help rehabilitate prisoners. If we take people and lock them up and don't use that period when they are literally captive, to try to do something which make it less likely that they'll go and burgle someone's house when they get out, then we're just losing a golden opportunity. Few of us will experience life inside, but all of us have a stake in stopping prisoners returning to crime. <laughs>